uh, this is Maria, and this is Juan. Juan. Maria is opposite Juan, and Juan is opposite Maria. But observe. Maria is in front of Juan. Juan is in front of Don Quixote. Yeah, de la Mancha. And this is Pedro. Pedro guitar. Pedro guitar is in front of Maria. Maria is in front of Juan. Juan is in front of Don Quixote. Yes. Aquí no son opposite, because I'm in frente a frente. Pero delante de is in front of. Juan is in front of Don Quixote. Maria is in front of Juan. And Pedro Guitar is in front of Maria. OK. There are four people. All right. In front of, behind. In front of, in front of, in front of, in front of. OK. Can you get it? In front of. Hola y bienvenidos a la clase número 21 del nivel básico. Hoy vamos a ver una pregunta más y con you. Are you, estás, are you, o eres, are you in front of her? Ok, estás delante de ella. Vamos a centrarnos en la primera parte. Are you, are you, no you, sino you, are you. ¿Estás o eres? Are you tired? Por ejemplo, tired es nuestra palabra del día y significa cansado o, o cansada. Are you tired? ¿Estás cansada? ¿Estás cansado? Are you tired? Not tired o tired o no sé, pero tired, tired, yeah? Cansado. Are you happy? Are you sad? Are you angry? Angry, de la clase anterior, enfadado o enfadada. Are you happy? Are you sad? Are you angry? Are you cold? Cold, tienes frío. Vamos a ver esto más adelante. Are you? Yeah, hay que repetir esto muchas veces. Are you? Are you? Muy bien. Hello, it's Michelle Matthews. Vamos a empezar la entrevista para el asistente de Mr. Strong, ¿vale? Okay. Um, excuse me? Es que no te entiendo. ¿Eres alemán? Are you German? No entiendo tu acento. Are you German? Uf. Me ha preguntado si yo soy americana. Pero por favor, mi acento es imperceptible. Y además me ha dicho, are you American? Dilo conmigo, es, are you American? Bien. Uf. Listen, are you Chinese? Porque no te entiendo. Are you Syrian? No te entiendo. What? Are you Spanish? No, no puede ser de España. A los españoles entiendo perfectamente. Are you from America? Ah, oh, como yo. Well, are you happy? Porque tienes el puesto. Okay, vamos a continuar con esta pregunta. Gone in front of. Are you in front of her? Are you in front of? Delante de. Now, in la clase anterior, vimos la palabra opposite. Opposite que significa enfrente de. Yeah? Opposite, enfrente de. In front of, delante de. Okay? Hay una distinción muy sutil, pero hay una distinción. Yeah? So, are you in front of? Estás delante de el aeropuerto, the airport. Are you in front of the bus station? Yeah, la estación de autobuses. Are you in front of the train station? Are you in front of the hairdressers, la peluquería? Are you in front of them, ellos o ellas? Are you in front of them? In front of, hay que decirlo como si fuera una palabra sola. In front of, in front of. No decimos in front of, sino in front of. Y hay que bajar la mandíbula. In front of, in front of, not in front of. Are you in front of the station? Are you in front of the bus station? Are you in front of the train station, for example? Muy bien. 
Hello, it's Mr. Strong, and say hello to these. Mwah, mwah. All right, this is a box. This is a 100 kilo box. It's very heavy, muy pesado. This is a 100 kilo box, and it is in front of me. It is in front of me. Yeah, delante mía. Cuidado con la pronunciación. No decimos in, es in. No es i latina, in. No in, in. Repítelo en casa. In, in. Front, y casi lo decimos junto. Front of, in front of. In front of, no of, of, of. Es más, a. Ah, en dilo todo junto ahora. In front of, in front of me. The box is in front of me. It's in front of me. This hundred kilo box is in front of me. Three, two, one. Ah! Okay, vamos a finalizar esta clase con otra palabra. Her, her. Okay, la pregunta entera es, are you in front of her? Her, estás delante de ella? Her. Fíjate en la pronunciación de la H. Her. No decimos her, sino her. Are you in front of her? Estás delante de ella. Y nuestra palabra del día es tired. Tired, que es cansado o cansada. Are you tired? Is he tired? Is she tired? Are you in front of her? Are you in front of her? Is she in front of her? Is he in front of her? Yeah? Are you in front of her? Am I in front of her? Or am I opposite her? Am I in front of them or is he in front of them? Yeah? Are, am I in front of you or opposite you? Yeah? Okay, the, the, so a final. Are you in front of her? Her. Muy bien. No. Sarah Collier? Is it yeah? Is it her? Is it her? Oh my god. It's her. It's her. Her, you know, her, okay? Her. Mira, haz que te calientes las manos. Her. her. It's her. A ver tú. Very good. Oh, entonces, ¿estás cerca de ella? Are you close to her? Oh, you're close to her. I can't believe it. Oh, estás al lado de ella. You're next to her. Next to her. Oh, my goodness. Oh, mi amiga está en el mismo autobús que Sarah Collier. Uh, she's next to her. She's next to her. Oh, my God. ¿Cómo? Que se ha cambiado de posición. Y ahora estás delante de ella. You're in front of her. You're in front of her. Oh, mi amiga está delante de Sarah Collier. She's in front of her. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. Oh, y ahora, you're opposite her. Estás enfrente. You're opposite her. Oh my God, mi amiga está enfrente. Oh. I'm getting fat. I need to slim down. I need to lose weight. Y soy parte de la media. Entro en la media. Uh, on average, como el gol avaraje, eh? En el fútbol. Average. On average, como promedio, como media. On average, nine out of ten people eat too much. Nueve de cada diez personas come demasiado, yo incluido. Nine out of ten people eat too much. And on average, nine out of ten people, nine out of ten people are relatively happy in life. Do you think so? And on average, seven out of ten people don't smoke. So three out of ten people smoke, on average. And on average, Nine out of ten people drink a little or a lot of alcohol. Nine out of ten. Five out of ten. It's curioso la expresión out of, pero así se dice. Cinco de cada diez. Five out of every ten or five out of ten. Need to learn English. Hello. 
and welcome to another class. Are you ready to begin? Okay, let's start. Tenemos la frase de hoy que es, on average, nine out of ten people eat too much. A ver la traducción. De media, nueve de cada diez personas comen demasiado. La primera parte, la expresión on average. Fíjate bien, on average. Preposición on y después average. Pronunciation, average. Average. Se, se quedan en dos sílabas. No average, pero average. Significa de media. Miremos más ejemplos. On average, women like to shop more than men. Right? De media, las mujeres les gusta comprar más que a los hombres. Y es verdad. <laughs> On average, I go swimming twice a week. De media, uh, nado dos veces a la semana. Más ejemplos. My boss, on average, approves 50% of all projects. Mi jefe aprueba, de media, 50% de todos los proyectos. So repeat, on average. Right? Dos palabras, on average. Sigue practicando. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the shop that sells everything you need when you need it. This is April and she's one of my best customers. She buys everything. Ella compra un promedio de 23 bolsos a la semana. She buys, on average, 23 handbags a week. On average, 23 handbags a week. Fíjate, on average. No, on average. On average. Average. She buys, on average, 23 handbags a week. Y pinta labios? She buys, on average, 10 lipsticks a week. Shoes? On average, she buys 15 pairs of shoes a week. A and purses? On average, she buys 8 purses a week. She's the best customer. Ok, ahora empezamos con la segunda parte, the second part. Ready? On average, 9 out of 10 people eat too much. De media, 9 de cada 10 personas comen demasiado. Ahora miramos la expresión. 9 de cada 10 personas. 9 out of 10 people. Ahí se puede meter cualquier número. Right? Four out of five. Seven out of nine. Coge esos números. Three out of five people. Nunca decimos three of five people. Seven from eight people. No, no, no. Decimos out of. Okay, dos números. Three out of five people. Y ahora, todos juntos así, muy fluido. Three out of. Out of. Casi suena como una palabra, ¿verdad? Three out of five people. Más ejemplos. Nine out of ten people like nature. Ok, nueve de cada diez personas les gusta la naturaleza. Muy bien. Nature, la palabra del día. Three out of five people prefer the beach. Tres de cada cinco personas prefieren la playa. Ok, sigue practicando. Hi, this is Frank, a security guard. We've got a little situation on our hands. Nueve de cada diez personas está robando del centro comercial. Yeah. Nine out of ten people are stealing from the shopping mall. Nine out of ten. What? Oh, man. Vamos a ver lo que han robado. Hmm. Ketchup. Nine out of ten people are stealing ketchup? Really? Ketchup? Come on. ¿Qué más? Hmm, sugar. Ah, cuidado con la pronunciación aquí, no es sugar, es sh sugar, sugar. Nine out of t ten people, nine out of ten people, that's ridiculous. Is stealing ketchup and sugar? Seriously? Oh man, nine out of ten people. What? Excuse me. Yeah, this is Frank. Someone yeah, stole paper. someone stole the toilet paper. Oh, come on. 
Ok, ahora terminamos la clase con la última parte, pero repasamos la frase. On average, 9 out of 10 people eat too much. De media, 9 de cada 10 personas comen demasiado. So, la última parte aquí es eat too much. 9 de cada 10 personas comen demasiado. 9 out of 10 people eat too much. Aquí decimos too much para decir demasiado. Y nunca decimos eat too many. No, hay que decir too much, too much. Más ejemplos. My brother eats too much. My dog eats too much. Mi perro come demasiado. She works too much. Ella trabaja demasiado. He studies too much. Él estudia demasiado. Again, too much. No decimos he studies too many. Ok, too much. Much. Repeat, too much. They talk too much. Hablan demasiado. So, repetimos. On average, 9 out of 10 people eat too much. On average, 9 out of 10 people work too much. So, repeat. On average, 9 out of 10 people eat too much. Muy bien. See you next time. Ooh, I'm hungry. It's time for lunch. Me voy a comer en casa de mi madre. I'm going to have lunch at my mother's house. But my mother says that I eat too much. Que como demasiado. My mother says I eat too much. Claro, hay que decir I eat too much. No se dice too many. Hay que decir too much, porque es incontable. Too much. I eat too much. My mother says I eat too much food. She says, Zach, you eat too much food. Zach, you eat too much spaghetti. She says, you eat too much meat. You eat too much bread. My mother says I'm getting fat. Do you think? Am I getting fat? My mother says I'm getting fat because I eat too much. Actually, nine out of 10 people eat too much. They say that nine out of 10 people eat too much. It's unbelievable. Anyway, I'm hungry. I'm going for lunch. Hello. Uh, listen, uh, por favor, una petición. I have a request. Uh, have them type up the report and forward it to me, okay? Have them write up the report and forward it, forward it to me. Primero, lo escriben. Que lo escriban. Eh? Have them write the report, or write up the notes. Si se trata de apuntes o notas, um, have them write up or type up the notes. And luego, que me envíen, que me los envíen. Have them forward the notes to me. Lo importante que es have, usando el verbo tener, curiosamente, como una especie de hmm, encargo. Que, que me lo traigan. Escuchad. Have them bring it to me. Que lo hagan. Have them do it. Que, que, me, que vengan aquí. Have them come here. Uh, que empiecen ya. Have them begin. Que aprendan inglés ya de una vez. Have them learn English once and for all. Hello again. In today's class, we're going to be bossy. It's always bossy, but it's going to be mandón, okay? We're going to be bossy because we're going to look at an expression which is particularly used by extremely bossy people. Y es lo siguiente, vamos a verlo. Have them type up the notes and forward them to me. Bien, ¿qué significa? Que ellos pasen las notas a ordenador y que me las reenvíen, ¿ok? Es una expresión bastante desagradable. ¿Quién lo diría? Pues, a bossy boss, un jefe mandón. O también a bossy boots. A bossy boots, que es nuestra palabra del día. Bossy boots es, es un mandón, ¿ok? Are you a bossy boots? I'm not a bossy boots, but if I were a bossy boots, I might say to you, have them do it, que lo hagan ellos. Have them do it now, que lo hagan ahora. Have them, entonces tenemos have en el imperativo, luego el pronombre, o el, no, eh, el nombre, have John do it. Y luego el verbo básico, o sea, el infinitivo pelado. 
Have them do it. Have them call me. Have them run away. Have them stop that now. Okay? Que lo hagan. Have them do it. Good. I enjoyed being bossy. Felicity, get a grip. Hoy estás tú al cargo. Today, you're in charge. So let's see. Have Margaret clean all the rooms. Have her clean all the rooms. Just have her do it. Have her do it. Y no have her to do it, sino have her do it. All right, just have her do it. And have her clean my room too. And, and George, have him work two shifts. No, in fact, have him work three shifts. Have George work three shifts. And, and, and the rest of the team? Que hagan cinco turnos. Have them do five shifts. Have them do five shifts. Okay, and, and wait, I'm not finished. Have George buy me some medicine and have him buy me some more tissues too. Okay, have them type up the notes. Que ellos pasen a ordenador las notas. Sí, eso es, the notes. Bien, have them type up the notes. En inglés, el escribir a máquina tiene su propio verbo, que es to type. Escribe T-Y-P-E, type, pero se pronuncia type, con una P fuerte. To type. I am a fast typer. También hay un sustantivo ahí derivado. A typer or a typist. Yeah? To type. And when you type up something, lo pasas mm, de sucio a limpio. Eh? Lo pasas al ordenador. I'm going to type up my notes. I, I write down my notes or I take notes by hand. I write my notes and then I type them up. ¿Ok? I type them up. Cuando empleas un pronombre, siempre hay que colocarlo dentro, entre el verbo, type, en este caso, y la preposición con todos los verbos compuestos separables. ¿Ok? Bien. Type it up. Um, I wrote my report by hand and then I typed it up. El pasado es tiped. Es regular, pero no se dice tiped. Se dice typed. La P y T, una T fuerte, muy juntos. Typed. Have them Type up the notes. Oh! Harriet. Oh, hello, Harriet. What? You want me to type up the bar menu? Oh, please, no. I don't want to type up the bar menu. I don't know how to type up the bar menu, and I really don't want to do it. Oye. Oh, yeah. Puede decir tanto, type up the bar menu, como type the bar menu up. Dilo de ambas maneras conmigo. Type up the bar menu, type the bar menu up. Bien. Harriet, type it up yourself. Hmm. Now, where was I? Oh, yes, cleaning. Oh, not again. Harriet, I told you. What? I can't type up the notes of the meeting. Type them up yourself. <sighs> okay, have them type up the notes and forward them to me. Es la, la frase entera. Pero antes de, de ver la tercera parte de la frase, me gustaría hacer hincapié en la importancia de cerrar bien la boca cuando dices palabras que acaban en M. Por ejemplo, them, una palabra que todo el mundo conoce, pero que casi nadie pronuncia bien, por lo menos en este país. Bien, have them. Es como si tuviese una pequeña E después. Have them, no es them o them, es them. Have them type up the notes and forward them to me. Forward ya lo conocéis, to go forward, supongo. Y hacia adelante, pero forward también es verbo en inglés. To forward, se escribe forward pero se pronuncia forward, con dos sonidos que no existen en castellano. Una O larga, for, y luego word, ¿ok? Word, forward, la de fuerte también. Forward them to me. I'll forward it to you. Please 
forward me the report, forward me the document, forward me the file. I'll forward everything to you by next week, para la semana que viene, okay? So, have them type up the notes and forward them to me. Que pasen las notas ahora de nuevo y que me las reenvíen a mí. See you soon, take care. Hello, friends. Felicity here. This week, Harriet is on holiday. <laughs> and I'm in charge of the hotel. <laughs> so, if you have any questions, doubts, or complaints, mandemelos y yo se los reenviaré a ella. Send them to me and I'll forward them to her. Say it with me. Send them to me and I'll forward them to her. Good, one more time. Send them to me and I'll forward them to her. Perfect. Guys, if you have a problem with your room, well, email Margaret, put me in copy and I'll forward them to Harriet. Uh -huh. If you have a problem with the food, well, you can email George, but put me in copy and I'll forward it to Harriet. If you have a problem with the swimming pool, well, email Juan, put me in copy and I'll forward it to Harriet. Oh. Hello, Felicity speaking, the temporary boss. <laughs> Send it to me and I'll forward it to Harriet. 